see a woman at the edge of this crowd. If you were paying attention, you saw her too when she came in here because she's an observer. She saw you. She takes simple pleasures in simple pleasures, paint by number sunsets or the dog next door. She likes the feel of cold floors on her bare feet so much that it makes her cry. She laughs whenever she can, wherever she can, whether she should or she should not. She puts her hand against her lips so you can't tell she's laughing, but you can tell she's loud. She is happy. She says she's happy. But she looks at her friends and their dreams about children and their hair and their partners and their new coffee makers and there's no reason why she would want a new coffee maker. She hates coffee, but she just lusts after them just the same. The first thing she looks at is hands. She loves hands, just not her own. She thinks Bonnie and Clyde is a perfect tragic love story. She likes that Bonnie Parker wrote poetry. She hates that she died with 100 people watching. But this is not her story. Bonnie or the woman. It's mine. <laughs> I see a man in the back of the room who hasn't left his apartment in three weeks. His shirt is awkwardly old. His shoes are tenderly new. Maybe it's just being here with you people that puts that painful look on his face. He collects African masks that hang on the walls of his living room and look down on him with eyeless faces. Even though he admires them, he still feels like they judge him. He must do better. He won't look at them in the eyes even though they don't have any. He watched too many horror movies as a kid. Last time, he had a woman in his house. She said something coyly suggestive, and he was so sure the masks were watching with disapproving eyelessness that his face turned a shining magenta red, and she thought he was having a heart attack, and she left. He has a cat named Stanley, one of those hairless cat cats that everybody thinks is like super freaky including our man, but he keeps it, and he loves it, as far as Stanley knows. It's a connection so desperately needed that he keeps a reminder on his calendar to pet the cat. After he pets the cat, he goes to the bathroom and he throws up. But this is not his story, uh, Stanley or the man. It's mine. If you were paying attention, I've told you everything that you need to know. How these, how these two people are made for each other. How every fold and corner and unkept edge lines up perfectly. 
how she would put her hands on his face and, and look into his eyes for a moment and the world would stop and everything would be okay. I'm sorry, this is not that story. It's not the story of them. Even if they suddenly realized who I'm talking about and they think they could look around for each other, there was never a them. No matter how much you wanted it. The woman who likes hands and the man with the hairless cat, they'll never meet. They will never hug on a chill spring morning in the street outside his apartment with the African mask looking down from his window going tisk, tisk, tisk. She will never admire his hands, which is a shame because they're marvelous. This story has nothing to do with them. You'll never know what happens. Life is like that. This is not the fable where the hero gets the girl. In my fairy tale, I'm the hero. And the princess is in a tower so dangerously high that it, it, it sways in the wind and it's so far that I couldn't reach it if I had wings. And I don't have wings. I, I don't have sails. I, I can't be born aloft on horses or, or dragons or, or magic. If you're here looking for magic, hit the road. If you're the one person here with a perfect life, this is not your story. You don't need one. You're okay. Stories don't have to be about perfect people. I've been waiting for mine long enough. This is mine. This is not your story.